So let's just get right into it. So um, as you know, you have the questions pre, um, I gave them to you previously. So yeah. I just wanna ask how many poetry slams have you guys had in the past? Well, actually this is my first slam. It's a first for both me and the city. And although I'm like a little bit nervous because I've like never done this before, I think it just makes the experience of hosting the poetry slam all the more exciting. Definitely. I, I had the opportunity though to like participate and help organize in the open mic nights that are hosted oh, wow. by Town Life. And so that kind of gave me like some insight on how I wanted to host the slam. Wonderful. And what was the inspiration behind the poetry slam? Um, I think, I think um, there were a lot of factors that definitely contributed to me making the slam in the first place. I think that hosting an event like this has always been like a personal dream of mine because I'm just really passionate about giving like fellow young poets this platform to express themselves and, and get inspired by other writers. And so personally, I've attended and watched a lot of other slams in the past. And there's such powerhouses for teen expression and teen creative input. And that's just something that I wanted to do for, for my city. That's awesome. So why do you think it's important to have an event like this at such a tense time? Um, it was funny because actually after the, the, corona, um, the coronavirus outbreak occurred, I was all the more determined to host this event so that Pleasanton students can, you know, like spread positivity and, and connect with their community during this very, as you said, difficult period. And so when we choose to, to like socially isolate, we create this physical barrier between ourselves and our peers. But I don't think that a physical like isolation should correspond with a mental one. And so rather with, you know, like all the technology we have from Zoom to Skype, it's all the more important for us to just come together. And so COVID-19 is such an incredibly stressful reality that we have to like come to terms with on like a day-to-day -day basis. And so I think creative writing would be like a great outlet for people to just confront the anxiety and the fear that we see. That's amazing. So um, regarding specifically to the competition, is there anything specific that you look for in teen poets? Um, no, that's funny because I'm usually like pretty open to like whatever ideas poets might bring. But I think that one thing that I look for in general is just that ability to like open up and be vulnerable in your writing. And so in my opinion, like one of the most critical purposes of poetry is just that ability to, to self-reflect in a way that you can't during your daily life because poetry as a medium is so much more vibrant and just so much more powerful. And so I think what I look for in, in any poet is that ability to just harness harness that power by kind of like letting go of some of your prior inhibitions. Wonderful. And what do you think makes a good poetry reading? Mm, I think I think it's honesty. Just pure unadulterated honesty. Like when I see a performance of poetry that really moves me, I can like visibly feel the emotion and the power of the poet. And honestly like I don't think I need to hear a poem that's like super flowery and intricate and like bursting with metaphors, but rather I think like the rawness and just the transparency of the words is kind of what matters to me the most. Absolutely, that's wonderful. And um, for the competition, the results wise, um, I know we are we're people who are competing will be going against each other. Um, so when can we expect the results of the event? There isn't like, like a, like a date set in mind that honestly depends. Um, based on what I know, it'll probably take two weeks to, you know, compile and analyze all the footage that we have. In light of, you know, the coronavirus outbreak, we're going to be pretty flexible about releasing the results because I think it's kind of important to us to, important for us to be accommodating with like our sponsors and our judges who are all extremely supportive of the event. You know, they include the Pleasanton Cultural Arts Council, Tri-Valley Writers, and um, the city of Pleasanton as well, you know. And I also want to make sure that we have enough time so that I can, I can also, like, accommodate and communicate with my mentors, like Miss Julie Esseltine and the city's library. So I think a lot of factors come into play before we release the results. 
Wonderful. So why do you specifically target teens in this event? Is there like any reasons behind that, that you don't open it up to the whole community? Um, I think that the reason I made it a more teen specific event is not because I want to like exclude adults, but more just because I want to like amplify teen voices. And so I'm a teen poet and I know that it can be super, super intimidating to sometimes be performing your work next to or in front of an adult. And so I just want to make sure that when I'm hosting this event, I can, I can kind of just remove that like barrier of self-consciousness. Gotcha. And are there any tips that you can give for nervous poets? Um, well, I think I would just remind them that they've made it, they've made it very far ahead just by choosing to write poetry in the first place because I think poetry can sometimes be a very daunting medium just because it can be cryptic at times. And so the fact that they've chosen to write poetry is already commendable. And if they've made, and if they've made it this far, then they have nothing to worry about. That's great. Um, and then what should people try to avoid when choosing their poems? Cause I know there is an interpretive category um, or reading their poems. Um, I think, I think, um, I myself and the city of Pleasanton is very flexible about like what we're willing to hear from poets, but just a couple of things to keep in mind. And there are a lot of like, um, there's a very detailed account of, you know, some do's and don'ts that are already on our tiny URL, like registration page. But um, a couple of things would first just to, just to like comply with some of our standards on like um, performing age appropriate content for the judges. Of course. Um, Another thing would also is that we're really interested in just hearing the words and the performance from um, our performers. And so we'd really, we'd really appreciate it if there are no music, if there's no music, no props, no costumes, anything of the like. And I think one last thing, and this is more like a word of advice, is just to make sure that you add your creative touch to the performance, whether it's your own work or someone else's. I advise that you don't like just pick a very cliched, well-known poem and then simply read it aloud because then that's not a very enriching experience for you or for your judges. Absolutely. Um, and is there anything that you'd like to add for the public to know about the competition itself? Maybe any tips that you can give? Mm, to submit it as soon as possible. Um, although our entries are due by April 3rd, uh, I would love if our applicants would submit their poems via private YouTube links um, just as soon as possible. Um, there's also like a lot more information about, you know, how the work should be submitted on the tiny URL. Um, it would be amazing if people could just spread the word, you know, through social media and beyond. And, you know, um, that's why I'm really grateful for AVS um, to, for AVS journalism for, you know, agreeing to cover our, our event. Um, and also just um, one more thing, which is if anybody has any questions about submissions or anything else, um, I'd be really happy to answer them. My email is kunaik2003 at gmail.com. That's wonderful. And I think that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so, for agreeing to interview me. <laughs> I will most likely email you a link to the article once it's written, um, and we'll hopefully be able to broadcast it on our student broadcast as well. All right, thank you. Wonderful, it was so nice to meet you. It was great to meet you too.